energy. Modern life runs on energy. Electricity and abundant fuel make our lives better by providing heating, cooling, and transportation. We use energy to grow and prepare food, to work at our jobs, and to entertain ourselves. Fossil fuels, oil, gas, and coal provide the bulk of this energy. Hydropower and nuclear power supplement these, and increasingly, wind, solar, and other renewable forms of energy are a part of our standard energy supply. A central energy question in environmental science has long been, when will we run out of oil? Oil is our single most important energy source in terms of both volume, consumed, and diversity of uses, from running cars, trains, and ships, to powering electrical generating stations and heating our homes. Globally, oil provides 33% of our total energy supply, followed by natural gas and coal. Together, these fossil fuels make up 86% of our energy supply. Hydropower, 7%, nuclear, 4% make up the rest. Wind, solar, and other renewable energies are growing fast, but they still make up only 3% of global energy. However, that is triple what they were a few years ago. The energy mix is changing. How it shifts will depend on how China and India, the two most populous, most rapidly developing nations, choose to develop. One reason for the importance of oil, gas, and coal is the subsidies we provide for producing and consuming them. In 2013, global subsidies for fossil fuel amounted to about 1.9 trillion, or about 600 times the support from wind, solar, and all other alternative energy sources. This according to the International Energy Agency. New techniques for oil and gas extractions have sharply increased our estimates of recoverable gas and oil reserves in the past 20 years. We once thought we would run out a lot sooner than we actually will because these technologies have made these resources more accessible. For these reasons, our energy future is likely to be different from our energy past. While energy analysis have long worried about the end of oil, climate analysis now warn that we have far more oil, gas, and coal than we can safely use. Burning all coal, oil, and gas deposits would produce five times as much carbon as we can afford to release without disrupting most agriculture and most ecosystems, as well as drowning most coastal cities. Managing and shifting to renewable energy sources sounds like a daunting task. But the transition, while still small, is happening faster than analysts had expected it to just a couple years ago. Renewable energy analysis find that a transition off of fossil fuels is not just necessary, but it's also possible. And this transition brings co-benefits of a healthy environment, better jobs, less air and water pollution, and fewer violent conflicts over oil reserves. In this chapter, you're going to be looking at the different issues that are involved in energy, the types of energy that we use, the types of energy we prioritize and subsidize, and the pros and cons of all kinds of different energy sources.